Hi everyone, I'm Jeff. Um, I'm going to do something a little different today. Um, normally I would put up a shot and do something and, and have a little fun. But I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos lately on, and, and watching people's form. Now, being an instinctive shooter the way I am, form is so important. Um, if I don't have proper form, if I don't have consistent form, my whole shot will go right in the basket. Um, I can't make the shot without good form, good consistent form. Um, it's probably even more so important than if you're a gap shooter or if you shoot sights because I have nothing to fall back on, whereas they have something to fall back on. Um, one of the things that, that, that I notice the most of all is people's release. Um, there's such an inconsistency with the way it's being taught such an inconsistency in the way it's being done on YouTube that I thought I would do something here to maybe help some people out and help them shoot a little better. Um, everybody understands about a proper anchor point. For me, my anchor point is when this finger hits the corner of my mouth. Okay. When you're grabbing the string, you want a good hook your fingers. It's right here in the index fingers or not index finger, but in these three fingers, and I've got a good solid hook. And you get to your anchor point, you get to here. People do that well, but after that point, it just falls apart because it looks like they're swatting flies at the side of their head. You get the anchor point, what happens is the release becomes inconsistent. They start plucking. Okay, There's no place for this hand to go. Where's it going to go? It's all over the place. You watch people do several shots. One time it'll be here, the time it'll be here, the time it'll be here. Okay. You've got to have a consistent place for this hand to go in order to have a good solid release. So what I've done is I've actually created a second anchor point for my follow through. So I bring to my anchor and then I have a second anchor point to follow through. My fingers are on my ear. If you watch my videos, you'll see my shooting is here to here. Okay. What this does is it keeps my release hand on the same plane as the arrow. And that's extremely important, especially if you want a good release. If your release hand is going to the side, that string is going to vibrate. You're going to pluck. Okay. When you're shooting a bow, it's extremely important the string just slide off your fingers gently. If you have interference with the string, it's going to change the way the arrow flies. It's going to actually change that anchor point. That nice anchor point that you had here, nice and solid, if that string vibrates when you release, your anchor point is no longer true. So you must have a good clean release, a good clean slide off the fingers. Let me explain this another way. I like to think of it as putting a pail down. I've got a pail of water here. I just want to show you something. When I put this pail down, my release that I use when I'm shooting a bow is much similar to when I put this pail down. It just slides off the fingers. Okay. If I pluck it, I just broke the pail. That's the kind of thing that can happen. That's the sort of thing that happens when you draw back your bow and you release them consistently. You pluck the string and you make the arrow do things it shouldn't do. So, on my release, when I get into my anchor point, I go my second release to my ear. And that also, like I said before, that also keeps the, my, my release hand on the same plane as the arrow. That string has to slide true. Okay? If I don't do that, if I'm out here, that string's not going to slide true. If I'm coming down here, it's not going to slide true. If I hold static, it's not going to slide true. It's going to be like putting that pail down. I'm going to pluck it. Okay. That's what's so important about a release and having a good release, is that it slides off your fingers gently. It doesn't come off violently. And by having a release that's all over the place, swatting flies inside your head, you're going to have a violent release. And it's not going to be nice and smooth and you're going to shoot a lot worse and a lot less in, and with a lot less consistency. 
Um, I've got a, uh, a, a couple clips that I'm going to put on this video that uh, will show my daughter shooting, and she's got an awesome release. I'll also put some of the other clips that I have on of some of the releases that I've done in some of my other shots, and you can see. Now, one of the benefits of having this anchor point for my release, sometimes you'll see me in some of my videos where I'm having to shoot so fast, I don't even have time to get the proper anchor. So I'll short draw. But because I have that release anchor point, I'm still on the same plane on the arrow when, on, uh, as the arrows when I'm releasing. I'm still true because I'm still to here. Okay? If I don't get that, if I short draw and I don't have a proper release, well, I could be anywhere. My follow through is going to take it anywhere. But because my follow through, because my follow through is true with my release at my ear, even if I'm short drawn, I'm still good. I'm still on target because I'm finishing here. That's the importance of a release. The importance of a proper release. Um, that's what I wanted to talk about today, and I hope this really helps some people out. Um, it's just, uh, I, it's something I see being done incorrectly so much, and I thought maybe I could help a few people. Um, anyway, thank you for your time. Bye. Hi again. I uh, I nearly forgot about one aspect that I want to talk about, and that's practice. When I want to practice good release, when I want to really practice on my release, I don't shoot my 65-pound Super Kodiak. I go down to my 35-pound bow. The lighter the string, the more precise you have to be on your release. So if I'm releasing well on my 35-pound bow and I'm drilling tacks with those arrows, when I get to a bow like this, my release is going to be super deadly. So when I practice with my release, and I practice a lot, every week I'll shoot hundreds of arrows just on my release and just on my follow through, just on my form. I do it with a lighter bow. I don't do it with a 55 pound bow. I don't do it with a 45 pound bow. I do it with a 35 pound bow. With a 35 pound bow, any little mistake is going to be it's going to show up a lot more because there's not that pull on the string that there is with this. With this here, I mean, this wants to pull so hard, it's hard not to have a good release once you've trained. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to add that point in. When you practice, see if you can practice with a lighter weight bow. That's why it's so important for beginners to start with a lightweight bow. A lot of people will move from a compound bow, 60 pound, and then, and then figure, we'll go to a 50 pound recurve. No, 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 no. Start off with a 30 or 35. Learn proper form. Learn proper release. That's way more important than getting that poundage up there really quickly. You get there eventually. And you get there faster than you think. But if you, don't if you don't learn good form and good follow through and a good release on a lighter bow, you'll never learn it properly on a heavier bow. It's just too difficult. Um, that was just one of the tips that I had, had, had forgotten to put in um, into this video. Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I will uh, see you another time. Bye. Got it. Sweet it is.